In this video, we will explore different file allocation methods used in operating systems. These methods dictate how files are stored and organized on a storage device, such as a hard drive or solid state drive. We will specifically discuss contiguous, linked, and indexed allocation techniques. File allocation methods are crucial as they determine how file blocks are organized and stored on a disk. This organization significantly impacts the performance, efficiency, and the degree of fragmentation within the file system. We will cover three primary methods. First, contiguous allocation, where a file occupies a set of continuous blocks. Second, linked allocation, where file blocks are linked using pointers. Third, indexed allocation, where an index block contains pointers to all the file's data blocks. Let's dive into each of these methods in detail. Contiguous allocation is a method where each file is stored as a continuous sequence of blocks on a disk. This means all the blocks that make up a file are next to each other. In this scheme, the file directory entry contains just two key pieces of information, the address of the starting block where the file begins and the length of the file, indicating how many blocks it occupies. This method has a simple implementation, and it supports direct access to file blocks, allowing for quick retrieval of data. Also, it provides excellent read performance, particularly when accessing the file sequentially. However, contiguous allocation suffers from external fragmentation, where free blocks are scattered across the disk, making it difficult to allocate large contiguous files. Also, file growth can be problematic because there might not be enough contiguous space available to extend the file. In contiguous allocation, the directory entry for each file includes only the starting block address and the length of the file. This makes the directory structure very simple. As shown in the table, we have file A starting at block 9 with a length of 5 blocks. File B starts at block 25 and spans 3 blocks and file C begins at block 41, occupying six blocks. The simplicity of this method allows for efficient direct access to any block within the file. For example, to access the kth block of file A, you simply add k minus one to the starting block. So if you wanted to access block three of file A, you would add three minus one to nine, giving you a position of 11. Linked allocation addresses some of the shortcomings of contiguous allocation by storing each file as a linked list of blocks. Each block contains a pointer to the next block in the file. The directory entry stores a pointer to the first block and the last block of the file. This approach eliminates external fragmentation as any free block can be used, regardless of its location on the disk. Also, the file size can grow dynamically as new blocks can be added anywhere on the disk and linked to the existing chain. However, random access is quite slow, as you must traverse the linked list sequentially to reach a specific block. There's also space overhead because each block must store a pointer to the next block. Furthermore, reliability can be a concern because if a link is broken, the rest of the file might become inaccessible. The File Allocation Table, or FAT, is a popular implementation of linked allocation widely used in file systems such as MS-DOS and earlier versions of Windows. Instead of storing pointers within each disk block, FAT keeps all the links in a separate table located in memory. Each entry in the FAT corresponds to a disk block, and it contains the number of the next block in the file. The key advantages include improved random access because the links are readily available in memory. The entire FAT can be cached in memory, speeding up access times. And there is no space wasted in data blocks because the pointers are stored separately. Looking at the directory table, file A starts at block 3 and comprises 3 blocks, while file B starts at block 6 and occupies 4 blocks. To access file A, you start at block 3 and follow the pointers to blocks 4 and 5, and then to the end of the file, which is indicated by a negative one. Index allocation offers a different approach by using a special index block. This block contains pointers to all the data blocks that make up the file. The directory entry simply points to this index block. This method supports direct access to any block within the file, 
because all the pointers are readily available in the index block. There's also no external fragmentation, as data blocks can be located anywhere on the disk. The file size can also grow dynamically, up to the limit of the index block's capacity. However, index allocation does incur space overhead for the index blocks themselves. Also, the maximum file size is limited by the number of pointers that can fit in the index block. To access the kth block of a file, you first access the index block. Then you find the kth entry in the index and finally access the data block pointed to by that entry. To handle larger files, there are different index allocation schemes. In a linked scheme, index blocks are linked together to support larger files. This means that if one index block is not sufficient to hold all the necessary pointers, it can point to another index block and so on. The downside is that finding a specific data block might require traversing multiple index blocks. In the multi-level scheme, a tree of index blocks with multiple levels of indirection is used. The primary index block points to secondary index blocks, which in turn point to the actual data blocks. This hierarchical approach can support very large files, but it also adds complexity to the file system. Now let's compare the file allocation methods that we have discussed. Contiguous allocation provides excellent random access performance and has no space overhead. However, it struggles with file growth and suffers from external fragmentation. Linked allocation has poor random access performance and incurs pointer overhead, but it supports easy dynamic file growth and has no external fragmentation. FAT, which is a variant of linked allocation, offers good random access performance, especially when the table is cached. It has table overhead, but supports dynamic file growth and has no external fragmentation. Index allocation offers excellent random access performance and supports easy file growth, however, it has index block overhead and can be complex to implement. Real-world file systems often use a combination of these methods to balance their strengths and weaknesses. For example, Extension 4 uses a variant of indexed allocation, NTFS uses a master file table, which is similar to FAT but more complex, and FAT32 uses the file allocation table approach. If you like this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Visit codelucky.com for more such useful content.